Hello, Eric Ripley with ShiftKey Solutions, and in this video tutorial, we'll be working with Microsoft Excel 2010. We'll be covering the following uh, items. This will be a two-part video tutorial. The first part will consist of working with footers, inserting a file name and current date in the footer, saving a file, using our auto fit for column width, and also adjusting the column widths of particular columns. We'll be adjusting themes, cell styles, and also using our auto sum. We'll also be constructing some simple formulas with absolute cell reference, using our fill handle, formatting numbers, and in the second part of this tutorial, we'll be working with column charts, and pie charts, modifying those charts. Okay, let's take a look at the raw uh, worksheet that we're going to be working with. This is just the raw data that's been entered. Uh, as you can see, we only have one worksheet here, revenue, uh, with the raw data. Let's take a look at what we will end up creating. Here on this worksheet, we can see that once we take that raw data, it'll end up looking like this. Um, we have our data formatted here uh, as long, along with a uh, column chart at the bottom of it. But we also have a second worksheet down here called revenue chart. We have two separate charts here. This one's a column and this one is a pie chart on a worksheet of its own. This is what we will end up creating. Okay, to begin with, if we look at this data here, we can see that some of the information here uh, we can't read all of it. When you can't read this, this is what's called truncated. This data, or this text here, goes underneath this column here, along with this and this, and this one spills over to this side. That's because there's nothing in this cell right now. This is truncated. Along with this, we have all of these pound signs. If we look here, if I click on them, I can see what's actually in here by the screen tip and also in the formula bar. Well, I need to widen this. This simply means that there are numbers here that are uh, wider than the column width. So our first step is to use our auto fit. We're going to come over to column A here, and I want to auto fit this uh, to the widest entry. So the way I use my auto fit is I put my cursor here between A and B, columns A and B, and I put my cursor right here between the two of them in the column header, and I double click. And it's auto fits. Now my next step is I want to uh, modify the width of these cells here. Oh, I'm sorry, these columns. So I'm going to select these columns, B through F, and I'm going to right click on the column header and come down to column width. When I do, I can type in the specific um, column width that I'd like. In this case, I want 13 points. And it doesn't tell me points here, but 13 means points. It always refers to points, which means uh, 13 characters can go into each column. I'm going to click OK, and it widens them out. Next, I want to um, fill this in here, these, these, uh, this worksheet uh, headers. I want to go from January, February to March. Well, I don't want to type those in. I want to use my shortcut. So I'm going to select January and come down here to my fill handle, click and drag to the right. That's called a fill series. Fills it to the right. Next, I want to modify the themes to this worksheet. So I'm going to come up to my Page Layout tab, come over to my Themes group, and click Themes. The one I want to change this to is called Solstice. So I'm going to scroll down, and there it is, Solstice. It modifies the text. And it also has color formatting, too. Next, I want to adjust these uh, uh, data headers here. So I'm going to select this range here of a2 through F2, and once I have that selected, I want to do text wrapping so that this cell here can wrap the text down below it. So in order to do that, I have it selected. I'm going to go to my Home tab, and then come over to my Alignment group, and click Text Wrapping, and it wraps that text. Once I do that, I can see that that doesn't look very presentable, so I want to adjust its alignment to center and middle. So here's my center alignment, and here's my middle. So now it looks more presentable. As long as I have it selected, I want to apply a particular style. 
so, so that it distinguishes itself from the rest of the worksheet. So I'm going to go to my Styles group, click my More button, and then I'm going to come down and choose 40% Accent 2, and that modifies it. When I'm finished with that, I want to come over and um, uh, create a totals here, and I want my totals here. I have my total revenue and my quarter totals. So in order to do that, a shortcut that I like to use is to select the entire range where I want my totals to appear, and I'm going to now use my auto sum. I'm going to come up to my editing group and click auto sum, and it automatically appears the totals. Now, conversely, I want to select this range as well, B11 through E11. Select that range, and then again, auto sum. There's my totals. Now, once I'm finished with that, I want to select this range here, A3 through A11, and I want to make these distinguishing a little bit. These are my row headers, my data set row headers. So I'm going to select this and just simply make them italic. It kind of separates it a little bit. When I'm finished with that, I'm going to come over to cell F3, and I want to put in the percentage of quarter revenue. And how I come up with a percentage is to take this total and divide it by the overall total. So I'm going to select this cell. I'm going to put in a simple formula. It's going to be equals E3 divided by E11. Now, <clears throat> before I finish this formula, I want to remind myself that if I use my fill handle and I fill down to here, um, I need to have this cell remain the same throughout all of these formulas. So in order to make that the same all the way through, I need to change the cell reference E11 to be an absolute cell reference. In order to change that into an absolute cell reference, I'm going to press F4 on my keyboard. And it puts in the dollar signs, which locks that reference in. As I fill it down, that will remain the same. So now that I've done that, I'm going to come up and click my Enter button here, the check mark, and there's my percentage. If I fill this down, it's going to give me my percentage reference relative to the quarter total and then the grand total, or I should say total revenue. So just to verify that I did this correctly, I'm going to select in each one of these cells and look in my formula bar. E11 is in here, E11 is in this formula, E11 is in this formula as well. It's because it's absolute. When I'm finished with this, I want to make these uh, cells here all a percentage. So I'm going to select this range. I'm going to format these numbers. I'm going to come to my numbering group and click my percentage. It changes it to a percent style. It's a little more legible for me. Now to be a little more specific on the percentage, I want to increase the decimal place by one. So I'm going to again come up to my numbering group and click increase decimal. And it becomes a little more specific. You'll notice that it uh, without that, it rounds up. So if I increase a decimal, it doesn't round up. It goes to the first tenths. Now, because this is a uh, financial document of sorts, or I should say a financial worksheet, um, to format this in a um, common style, we're going to select this first row of uh, numbers and select the second row. Now, the way in which I selected these two rows, these are called, this is called a non-adjacent selection. Now the way I did that is I selected my first row and then I pressed control on my keyboard and I click and drag the second row. Once I have them selected, I want to apply a, an accounting format. So I'm going to come to my numbering group and click the dollar sign. And that's simply accounting format. Now. I want to remove the change in here, or remove two decimal places. So I'm going to come up to the decrease decimal and click it twice. When I'm finished with that, I want to uh, modify the uh, rest of the data to be a comma style, because right now they're just numbers. So I'm going to come to my numbering group and apply the comma style. Again, I need to remove the decimal places. 
when I finish with that, I want to apply a little bit of a uh, grand total uh, theme or look to this bottom row here, B11 through E11. Once I have those that range selected, I'm going to come to my Styles group, click my More button, and look for something that looks like totals, and here it is here. If I click Totals here, it applies a nice uh, top and double bottom border. And that will conclude the first part of a two-part series for Excel. Thanks for watching, and be sure to catch the second part of this, where we'll be working with charts. Thank you.